Hello, everybody, and welcome to Ask the CEO with Avraham Gatile. Today, I'd like to introduce a very special guest. He's the Executive Vice President and Chief Revenue Officer of Primo, a company that fills the critical gap in industrial productivity by leveraging analytics to transform underutilized data into operation critical insights. As part of this discussion, we will share how their partnership with Microsoft, their use of Azure and the Azure Marketplace have empowered them to scale and grow their business. It's my pleasure to welcome Paul Boris. Welcome, Paul. Thanks, Oliver. I'm great, uh, great to chat with you today. Yeah, great having you here. So, Paul, I'm really excited to be speaking to you today. IoT deployments have gone up year over year with a projected number of 20.4 billion devices installed by the end of this year. Now, while many manufacturers like to paint this rosy picture of customers using only their products in, in a greenfield environment, the reality is that many, many manufacturing facilities have all kinds of IoT devices installed in there. And as we know, one of the benefits of having an industrial IoT solution is the ability to obtain actionable analytics from your devices. And, you know, that's hard enough to attain on a single manufacturer's platform, let alone a hodgepodge of hundreds of thousands of disparate devices across an industrial manufacturing facility. What are the challenges industrial operations run into when trying to convert their IoT collected data into useful insights? Yeah, so this is, uh, I mean, this is a great point because everybody's in this rush to drive more data and more devices into the operation. And I've been in the space uh, at this point, you know, quite a long time, uh, uh, 30 years, really, in manufacturing. The, the biggest challenges are, uh, first off, uh, people don't think they have data at all. So they've got data on some new pieces of equipment or some new lines or something that they brought in. Uh, but that data, when they look at it from a typical perspective, isn't enough to give them a full view of what's going on in the operation. They've kind of got a node as opposed to a a network or a train of assets. So, so that causes a lot of issues because it shows up as gaps in the data, gaps in the insights they may get. That's not necessarily the case. I'll maybe explain why later, uh, but that is one of the concerns. Next is they've got some data and now they're trying to get it securely from that device, from that machine, from that cluster or work cell uh, into a position where they can use it. And that might be a local system, an MES, manufacturing execution system, something like that. Uh, now, more so, it's up into the cloud where they can do some deeper analytics on it and uh, get some better insights. And, uh, and the third is if you've actually got it and you've got it moved into a position where you can actually take a look at it, uh, a lot of folks, and, and this is one of the kind of mistakes that some people make, is they feel the necessity to have it all harmonized, normalized, rationalized. It's all got to be named correctly. And they spend, I talk with manufacturers that quite frankly, uh, they've got programs that might run two, three years where the first year is spent uh, cleaning things up. And uh, the, the, the big challenge there is halfway through that process, they'll bring in a new line from a different facility that's got a different set of systems with a different naming convention. Start all, start all over again. They're start all over again. They'll buy another division. They'll, they'll retire a facility and an asset where they started it. So it becomes this kind of uh, decaying loop of always get new information coming in and I can never seem to get this all straightened out. Uh, that's holding a lot of things up. There's a lot of things that are going on right now, really in the data space, the security and the transport of that data that are eliminating those challenges uh, for the most part. But it's, uh, you know, that's where people kind of get stuck. They, they look at this and they say, I've got to buy a whole bunch of sensors and put sensors in to get started. I, I think that's, um, I, I don't think that's accurate. I think you can get started a lot faster. It's more like, you know, getting things done is better than getting it done perfectly. It's, it's, yes, it's, uh, you, you need to move forward with a process because re remember this data isn't just going to change how you run these operations. It's going to change how your people interact with the systems and interact with each other and understand how the process is running. These processes are coming incredibly more complex. And if we don't kind of allow people to walk into the space where they're using these tools and technologies and virtual bots and things that are helping them through 
uh, to, to do better analytics, they're, they're not going to be ready. You can't flip the switch and instantly create this, you know, brilliant factory or smart factory and, and expect that everybody's going to be ready to do anything with that when they're standing in front of that equipment. You need to do this in tandem, uh, working together. So what can manufacturing facilities do to overcome the challenge of generating useful insights from their IoT data? So this is really where I've spent uh, a lot of my time and, and how I've attacked it for, for a lot of years. And, and this is back running on AS400s and getting reports on green bar and, and how you deal with that level of data when you're trying to run operations and manufacturing in real time. The, the point, and you mentioned this earlier, is to, to get started now with what you have. If I have nothing more than I know what went in and I know what came out, if I can get better insight to that and I can feed that information back to people, then I can actually start to understand, do I want to work on the first half of that, ad, that line or that area or that plant or the second half? How can I start dividing it? So it's not to lose good on behalf of pursuing uh, great. That, that's really what the, uh, the issue is about. So use what you have. You've got more data to, than you need to get started. Uh, start now and create some insights. Those insights will guide you into what the next best action is and how you're going to drive your process forward. So this sounds more like a leadership or management exercise as opposed to a technological, solving <laughs> a technological problem. It's, it's uh, uh, yes, it is. It is, if, if you don't understand that, and this is just my position, for the foreseeable future, right, we, we still can't get self-driving cars to do really well in adverse conditions. And uh, so just, Yesterday, I had a long conversation with a manufacturing manager, very complex process. He's dealing with right now, COVID, the virus, this massive disruption to the supply chain. So literally 40% of his staff of 500 has been yeah, called non-essential. So they're out. Now the other 60% have to come in. They have to stay six feet apart. They've got to wear PPE. Everybody's got to be protected and safe, all while doing manufacturing. He's in the oil and gas space. So there's been this tremendous collapse of the oil market. He's got to deal with that. And at the same time this was going on, they actually retired a facility and they're bringing a new facility into his operation. He can have all the data in the world, all the analytics, all the metrics. If he's not driving that team forward, and you know, one of the things that he said to me that I thought was really brilliant, he explains to his team every day that this is a chance to do something you'll never get to do in your lifetime. Your, your growth and your ability to endure uh, kind of chaos in operations will never be challenged probably in our lifetimes the way it is right now. So he's working with the team, but he's also now got them focused on the data. Where can we start to pick off pieces of data, start to roll that back into the operation and get folks refocused on the things that are driving the process forward most effectively. So if you're not doing both, if you're not considering how to augment the intelligence of the human and how to make the machine more uh, thinking, you know, a more intelligent machine and then work those in combination, you're going to miss the opportunity. I, I just don't think you're going to be able to drive the process effectively. So, Paul, uh, Primo recently launched a new offering on the Microsoft Azure marketplace called Razor. Tell us about it and how it addresses some of these challenges that we just discussed. So this is the foundational premise of the company uh, started about uh, just over three years ago was that uh, if we could augment the intelligence of the human, if we could create uh, kind of an AI mentor uh, software bot that could tap you on the shoulder and say, like just same way a 30 year operator would in those operations where they'd say, Hey, I've seen this before. I can't really recall, but I know when this happens and that happens and these things are put into the machine, you know, we need to do these extra work or we need to be careful of these other considerations. The, the software bot, this analytic engine called Razor, that's our product, listens to all the underlying signals that already exist in manufacturing. So we grab the data as it is, where it is, without the need to do all that rationalization and harmonization, and then listen for signals that we can feed back to the operator and say, here's an insight that you probably didn't catch, something you may want to attend to, with an understanding that an operator is going to do it, not do it, 
or do something completely different. But whatever that action is, gets picked back up by that model again. And the next turn of the crank, it's even smarter and provides even better insights. So it starts with what you have. It starts right now. We're providing these insights to companies in as little as 15 to 30 days that they're able to go back in and use with their teams. The teams then take an action that impacts the data. The data then impacts the team. And it becomes that uh, kind of virtuous cycle of the augmented human and the intelligent machine working together. Yeah, it's, it sounds like a uh, machine learning feedback loop. That's, that's exactly what it is. But it's, the, the key is to understand that in all of manufacturing, we're solving a class of problem. How to pull insights that are hidden inside the data you've already got. So go back to the beginning where we said you may only have a couple pieces of data. We don't need to have all the information, all the data about this node. We can take information from along a process or in a plant and actually uh, pull from that what nominal behavior is. And then that exposes what the suboptimal behavior is. And when we see that, that allows us to give some direction. And that's really based on the power of the tools that are available today around AI and machine learning. Yeah, yeah. And, and the more this technology evolves, it's really going to evolve to the point where, like we started this conversation with, where it provides this actionable information. Nobody really needs to see 600 data points. What they need no. to see is what matters to them. Well, they, you know, you get, so there's, if you can find it on the internet pretty easily, but uh, uh, the, the A380, the aircraft uh, that, that had a uh, uh, catastrophic failure in an oil line at a leading edge of a wing uh, in flight, thank God they had the most seasoned crew on the aircraft. They had trainers on the aircraft that just happened to be flying. Uh, they really knew what they were doing. Uh, they would have lost the aircraft easily. But what happened was it took them something like 45 minutes to clear all the alarms in the cockpit just so the team could determine what their next best action was. So if all we're hearing are these alarms sounding and we're not getting any context with them, if we're not getting insight with them and we don't realize one of them is a fire alarm that we need to get out, let alone reset a piece of equipment, then, then the consequences could be catastrophic. Now, they're not always that life and death, but in an operation, right, and think about what we're doing right now. I've either got to control cost much more tightly because my market's collapsed. I've got to control production much more tightly because I'm in a surge that I can't even control. People are buying more of my product than ever before. Or I'm bringing a new product in because half my plants closed, the other half are in, the food companies are taking all their institutional package and moving it to commercial and retail packaging. How do I get that started up without making all the mistakes everybody made before? I wanna learn from the insights that are buried in the data, I wanna do these things. So it's, it's, a, it's a tremendous opportunity for literally any manufacturer right now to take advantage of what they've got, improve the process, and start this cycle of digital transformation. Right, and I really uh, like that analogy. Yeah, it's it's uh, look, it's an exciting time. The, the the manufacturers are in a great position if they're thinking ahead. If they're thinking about, you know, what can I do differently to create more value tomorrow? I you know I can bring in all kind of consultants and technology and people to drive things next year, but what are we going to do tomorrow, next week? What are we going to do with the with the tools and technologies that we have? What can we add to it just to complement that mix and then drive the process? I think that's where people need to be focused because there's tremendous opportunity, frankly, everywhere. We've not engaged a company where we couldn't help them drive performance uh, very, very quickly. Great. So, Paul, how would a manufacturing facility use your solution with Azure? So we're in the Azure marketplace. So uh, literally you can uh, go to the Azure marketplace and you can execute and start uh, uh, the technology and the technology deployment. It, it drops in very, very quickly. Uh, it would be merely a matter of exposing historical data securely uh, so that we could then push it through. We're cloud-based, so we're on Azure. That's where our technology resides. It can run locally if that's a requirement of the manufacturing. Sometimes you have these... Uh, operations that are uh, have a security requirement uh, based on what they produce where they can't they need to air gap things uh, if that's necessary you can do that but typically it's on azure that data would then come into the analytic engine we would report the insights back 
and, uh, and we would, within a week to two weeks, start providing value to the operation, uh, literally from the time they say, let's go, let's get started. Awesome. And how can customers find out more about Razor and procure it through the Azure Marketplace? So I think they should go to the Azure Marketplace. We're going to have a, a short link on the screen, but I'm going to read it here to you just in case you want to write, write this down. Uh, it's going to be https colon slash slash bit dot ly, all lowercase slash two capital V, small q, capital J, small g 91. And you'll see that on the screen. It'll be in the show notes. And, uh, and you can get to the, to the Azure Marketplace. And there's a lot of great tools and technologies there. I mean, it's a tremendous resource that Microsoft's providing. Uh, for manufacturers and, and really anybody in the space that's trying to deploy new uh, advanced technologies. Great. And like you said, I'll post that to the show notes so people can just click on Excellent. that and get to it. Paul, how has partnering with Microsoft helped Primo scale and grow your business? I, I cannot uh, overemphasize what it's done. So we're, we were a startup three years ago. We've got uh, several Fortune 100 customers at this point. Uh, we're closing deals every quarter, new tech, new uh, customers and, and new uh, use cases and deployments. And the ability to get from that first concept to scalable, deployable, secure technology is really about how we've been able to leverage the Microsoft tools, leverage Azure, and, and now most importantly, the Azure marketplace to get more awareness of our technology out in the space and allow customers to access more quickly. So from literally every aspect, the Microsoft team has been fantastic and uh, we're working with some great folks and they've helped us and they really understand if you're, if you're a startup, if you're a young company, uh, you can get swallowed up by large organizations. It can be very difficult. They actually understand how to work with younger, smaller organizations that need to get their, their first wins in place and then build on that. And, and they've just been a fantastic partner from the technology to the uh, partnership programs, uh, to just visibility about what we're doing uh, in this space. Great. How can people find out more about Microsoft partnership opportunities for manufacturing partners? So they should go to the manufacturing marketplace. So that's MFG marketplace at Microsoft.com. And they can get into the manufacturing, uh, the Microsoft manufacturing group, and they can start looking at the uh, marketplace rewards there as well. So that's MFG M-A-R-K-E-T-P-L-A-C-E dot com. And we'll have a link there as well. Great. Yep. I'll link to that as well. Paul, how do people connect with you? So they can find us at Pramo.com. That's P-R-A-E-M-O.com. We're on Twitter at Pramo AI. And uh, you can send an email info at Pramo.com. We're on LinkedIn as well. You can find us very easily in the search box. Uh, just typing in Pramo. And uh, you can find myself there as well. Love to connect with folks. Awesome. Paul, do you have any parting words of wisdom that you'd like to share with the audience? So we're in a kind of an interesting time. You know, there'll be a time where this conversation will get replayed and we'll be well past this, uh, this disruption that's going on right now. And, you know, it's always amazing to me when you, when you see the general public learn about things like manufacturing supply chains and the criticality of manufacturing operations and companies that need to be able to flip products on a dime. We go from making literally automotive parts to ventilator parts uh, in a matter of weeks. And there's a capability and a resilience and an ingenuity that exists in the manufacturing space and has been, um, it, it's kind of been stifled because most folks, and, and reasonably so, want to make its data-based decisions. Microsoft has a, given us tools now to go all the way down to the metal and get that information out of these machines. We're building tools that allow us to actually use that data as is and, and start things very quickly. If you allow, if you really believe in your teams and their capability and understand like that manufacturing manager that I talked to who said, you know, this is a time that's, that's going to give them an experience and capability uh, like they've never had before, those people will step up. So challenge your teams. Get them thinking about new, using new tools, using new techniques, using new approaches. You have to do it right now as we sit in the middle of this disruption. 
But your ability to do that and trust those teams and drive forward is going to pay dividends in, in untold ways for years to come in an operation uh, based on how those people really drive and, and advance your organization and bring the best in their talent. I mean, I, I've been in manufacturing forever. The, the best people are in these supply chain teams and operations teams, and, uh, and they will work as hard on, on the goals of the organization as they will on anything. Give them some trust and some, some tools, and they'll definitely, uh, they'll definitely be ready to go. Awesome. Paul, thank you so much for sharing your time and your wisdom. I really enjoyed having you on the show. Avram, it's, uh, it's great to chat with you. Hopefully, we'll get a chance to chat again soon. And uh, thanks for having me. Stay safe.